flesh side, maybe mm, half a teaspoon or so. And then in the pan, breast side up. Now, before you do anything, before you touch the oven door, the timer, your coffee pot, your dog, wash these nasty chicken hands. Lots of hot water, lots of soap. Believe it or not, next to cut and paste, this may be the most valuable thing they taught you in nursery school. Now, about eight inches from heat to food is a good distance for a chicken this size. Any uh, closer than that, and our bird will end up looking like one of those pictures the state troopers need to look at when I was in class. Now, I'd love to tell you to turn the bird in 10 minutes, in 15 minutes, but the truth is, every broiler is different. Every chicken is different. So, give it about 10 minutes, and then take a look. Oh, and since most broilers turn off when the oven gets to a certain temperature, leave the door in the first open position. So, 18 minutes has gone by, well, in our world at least, and it is time to check the bird. Now we've got some really nice color there. This looks great, but I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it the turn. Paper towels, just grab the ends of the legs, flip them over. That's it, back under the broiler, for about another 10 to 12 minutes. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Has 10 minutes gone by already? Whew, I just had time to get this crudite platter together. Right, <laughs> time to tempt fate. Now do this a few times and you'll learn exactly what done looks and feels like. Now since light and dark meat cook a little differently, I check both. So shoot for the thickest part of the breast, about an inch from the wing. Not quite 165, but the meat feels good and the juices run clear. I think it's a go. Now, check the middle of the thigh on the opposite side. 167. Juice is clear. This bird is cooked. Now, like any roast, this bird needs to rest a few minutes so the juices have time to redistribute through the meat. It's going to lose a little juice, so put it in a deep bowl and cover loosely with oil. Now, we've just got time for the juice. Now these vegetables have served us well, but they're not done yet. Before we make our jus though, we want to get some of the extra fat off of the pan. Just tilt it up and let everything kind of pool in the bottom, and then use either a wide spoon or a, a bowl baster, which is my favorite, just kind of suck it right up off of there. But whatever you do, do not throw this away. Mixed with a little red vinegar and mustard, it'll make a terrific vinaigrette for a side salad. Now the pan's still really rocket hot.